Welcome to the Happy Mama Movement podcast. I'm Amy Taylor Cabaz. I would like to start by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on which this podcast is recorded as the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. And as this podcast is dedicated to the wisdom and knowledge of motherhood, I would like to acknowledge the mothers of this land, the elders, their wisdom, their knowing, and my own elders and teachers. Welcome back, everyone. On the 22nd of July, 2014, I registered my very first website, wanting to start sharing my story, my research and insights into motherhood, which means it has now been nine years of creating content and for most of that time, creating podcasts, both in this podcast and a previous incarnation, sharing stories of motherhood and matrescence from all over the globe. And so I think we often don't pause and celebrate enough in our current culture. And I also know that we have so much knowledge hidden in the archives of this podcast. And so in recognition of that, the team and I are going to be bringing you some micro matrescence moments over the next few weeks, highlights and insights from some of our episodes that you can listen to. And if you want to go deeper, pop into the show notes and see which episode to go back to and listen. Thank you for being here, perhaps for the last nine years or just for the last few minutes. This is how we change the way we support mothers. Sophie, thank you so much for joining the podcast. I have been so looking forward to speaking to you and understanding and sharing your journey. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me onto your podcast. I've been enjoying it for quite a while now, ever since starting your courses last year. And it's just such an honor for me and, and actually quite a big hurdle for me to overcome. Uh, um, one of my greatest quotes is fear is an opportunity to grow. So me speaking to you is embracing my fears today. Thank it's you so big much. Opportunity. <laughs> it's a big opportunity to grow. <laughs> uh, it is, yeah. No, I'm feeling really good about it. Uh, before motherhood came along, I was very career driven and reaching grasping at what I thought I wanted in life and then first baby came along and I'm like right do this with the baby do that thinking I was along the right path as I had my second child um, I was a graphic designer back then I'd started my own business I was working from home when my baby was three weeks old I went back to work I had to work you know I had to keep doing it come on feed the baby get back to sleep there was no space that I allowed myself for looking after me any kind of focus it was just all baby or husband or work uh, it was after my second child and as he became a toddler, so now we're talking about the kids are maybe like three or four, that I was starting to feel really burnt out. I had my graphic design business working from home. I'd taken some time off with my second child, realizing there was no way I could keep working with two children at home. That was good because I started drawing again and I started drawing the kids and it was something I always wanted to do. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be an artist. I'd studied fine art but I've become a graphic designer instead. Oh, it was when I started drawing the kids and one night I'd done a drawing of my son asleep and it was beautiful. And my husband leaned over my shoulder and said, that's really good. And I'm like, oh, you know what? It is, oh, it is quite good. And that was the catalyst for me, realizing that a little bit of creativity at nighttime instead of working was helping me get back into my art and as it unfolded I started selling prints of my work I used Instagram and social media to put it out there just threw images up of my artwork people started responding it gradually grew from there but I was making prints I hadn't even delved into my art again and what that truly meant for me and then I came back from overseas and there was a lot of 
self-doubt all of a sudden and my ability to go back to painting because now I didn't have to do it for school and I didn't have to do it for a degree well how on earth did I become an artist I'm like okay well you know I'll fall into graphic design that seems logical but underneath it all I didn't realize that there was no source of creativity for me that was it wasn't there was no outlet for me so I love one of your little quotes that our children are our greatest teachers because that would be one of the biggest things that I would say to new new mamas is I did not realize when I had Zoe who's now eight that she was going to be my biggest teacher that I have my children to thank for changing my life for getting me back into my art for pushing me to grow I didn't even know what self-development kind of was you know prior to them I mean they've since taught me so much just from me digging deeper into trying to be a better person a lot of the times we, we push things to the side. Some mamas might think, oh, well, that's just a hobby and so that's not important. And there's parts of us that we don't acknowledge. And these little reminders of what we love and what we're here to do can come back up again through motherhood if we let it. This is the thing though, Sophie. It's scary, mm. isn't it? To say, no, actually, I think I might give this a try. Breaking it down a little bit is through starting to learn meditation. And when I did a little uh, six-week local meditation workshop, I was like, oh, great, this, this seems pretty good. You know, this is working for me. And I remember thinking that my meditation teacher, um, I'm like, man, she must be such a pro at meditating. You know, she, I bet she sits down every morning and, and she's just zen. You know, she's 30 minutes of no thoughts and she's got this and it, it just flows very easily. Well, it's taken me a good few years later to realize that actually meditation is really hard for everyone still. (laughs) And isn't that like the beauty of it all? You know, like people say they can't do meditation, too many thoughts and everything. And now now I can sit down to meditate each day and be like, mine's racing. Oh, my goodness, come on. And be like, well, that's all right. Just sit here and just sit with it. Yes. And so... I've gone through phases of prioritizing it in my life and being like, I have to do it. And then, and it's been on the to-do list, you know, and other times like, oh no, it's not on the to-do list. I just have to do it. This is part of me, self-care. In the early days, it made a profound difference of how I treated the kids at 4.30 onwards. And um, I used to be drinking wine at 4 or 4.30 to, and I thought that's what used to get me through. And now I don't even touch any alcohol, you know. Now it's all, the other, all these other things that get me through a day and actually learn to enjoy my kids in the afternoon after school. A meditation in the morning would help you with the 4.30 in the afternoon overwhelm? Oh, Yeah. I, Isn't that, that's oh, what I really want to highlight is that you do this even in the morning and it goes through <laughs> to 4.30. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, oh, for ages, I couldn't work out why. And I stopped drinking coffee at one stage and I thought that was it. I, it was three weeks without coffee and I thought, oh, this is, must be that, you know, and started drinking coffee again and discovered that actually, no, it was the meditation. And I'm only talking about meditating for 10 minutes, maybe 15. I could build up to 20 depending on where I was at. And I would think about it like it was, it was like carrying the calm with me all day. This calm was sitting inside my heart center, reverberating all of throughout my body all day. And it just kept me centered and balanced for lack of a better word. And it really seems to work. Another big thing I've learned in my life is to accept the way things are. I used to think that I had a really difficult little girl, very bright, um, my Zoe, and loves to figure things out for herself. She's very academic, loves school. I want to go to school on the weekend, you know. But here I was thinking, oh, she's so difficult. She doesn't comply with anything I just ask, you know. Everything was agony and struggle with me, and I was just like, for years pulling my hair out with why she wouldn't conform to what I wanted her to do. So one day in in my journaling or something at night, I'm like, just accept that she is the way she is and accept there's going to be crap and accept that she's going to be difficult and just expect that every single day, wake up every single day. Okay, Sophie, it's always going to be difficult today. Two days after I said that to myself, I had a week of very easygoing Zoe and I was like, well, 
How did that happen? I didn't change anything with my parenting. I just put that out into the universe. And I didn't even know about the law of attraction then either, about, <laughs> about what energy you put out into the world is what you're going to get back. That was just phenomenal to me. I just accepted that she was going to be difficult. And she wasn't. <laughs> that our brain searches for evidence to prove what we're thinking is right. So, for example, if we're telling ourselves our daughter is really difficult, what we do is our brain lasers into all the evidence that that is the truth throughout the day. So instead of seeing the beautiful little moments where she is lovely and she is really kind to her sibling and she is beautifully expressive of who she is, our brain will be programmed to look for, see, she's just answered me back. See, she's done that again. Mm -hmm. And it's, gosh, that changed my life when I realized that what I'm thinking is not only attracting the energy of it, but my brain is attracting it more because I'm focusing in on what I don't want. I've realized that for 80% of the time, I'm the parent I want to be. It's been a journey for me and I'm still on a journey 20% of the time just don't have that energy to give and I know what my triggers are there I haven't had enough sleep I'm really tired I'm overwhelmed with mum jobs or you know putting the kids to bed my kids go to bed really late and it drains me but just need to accept that's how it is so I can have a little bit of time to myself I meditate when everyone's at school the next day or when you operate from the world view that life is in the precise pattern it unfolds before you, holds transformational lessons for you, you no longer shun experiences. Instead, you invite them in, saying you in some way drew these lessons to you out of your innate longing to develop on a spiritual level. So that just sums up where I'm at just so beautifully. Is all I want to do now is I yearn to keep growing and I yearn to keep evolving and developing what my purpose is again and coming back to it. Next year, I'll be doing my values again and reassessing where my art is at. I want to be the 60-year-old woman and still be like excited about self-development and still be prioritizing tiny pockets of self-care when I can I can see now you know like now right now my kids aren't teenagers I'm still relatively in control right like they still need to be dropped off and picked up and but they're not able to storm out of the house and go down the road to their friend's house or whatever so I can see that now is quite a lovely little phase and then once they become teenagers and off they go a, a little bit I still need to be there for them but I can see I'll have so much more time then so I'm just noticing that this is how my life is right now and running with it, going with the flow. Thank you for being a part of this movement and for listening to these amazing insights and stories of matrescence from mothers and experts around the world. Please know that you can be a part of this revolution by being a part of our Mama Rising Coaching Certification, which is open now and we start in September. Find out all the details by going to mamarising.net. And thank you again for being here. See you next time.